As we all know, in many, many places in the Bible we read that life is from God. We do not have the right to decide to take another person's life. And since life comes from God, we will be, we will be playing God to take someone else's life, whether fully grown or still in the womb. Because human life is sacred. We do not have authority from God to meddle with the sacredness of human life, to destroy it in any way. But that's not how a lot of people see it, do they? On this day that we pray for the legalization, for the protection of the unborn child, to stand with Christ is to stand for life. And to stand for life means we have to stand against whatever destroys life. There's nothing in our society that destroys more human life than abortion. Nothing at all. No crime, no disease, no natural disaster, no war. In fact, if you look at all of the American casualties that have occurred from all the wars we've ever fought in our nation's history, you will see that we destroy more human lives by abortion in one year than the lives were taken all of those wars combined. But when we stand for life, and when we defend life from its first moment of conception until death naturally takes life from us, we have to be able to realize we stand for all the unborn, for women tempted to have an abortion. We stand ready to reach out to those women who have had an abortion. To be pro-life means to be pro-woman. That's one of the great truths about the church that's been totally forgotten or ignored or never fully embraced. We love both the babies and the women, as well as the men who get caught up in this who never ever talks about. We protect all of them. We care for all of them. You know, the Holy Spirit comes to us at Mass, as you all know, to consecrate the bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, right? The Holy Spirit also comes to Mass, to, at this Mass, to make us one body. As a matter of fact, I will pray over the bread and wine, ask the Holy Spirit to come down to change that bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. Then after that prayer, the prayer of consecration, I will humbly call down the Holy Spirit upon all of you and ask that all of you be made into one body, one spirit in Christ. But what does that mean? It means that all of us should have as much care and concern and love for each other as we do for our very own lives. We're all in this together. We have this responsibility for each other not because we choose to, but because of who we are. We are the body of Christ. We are a ready-made family. Christ has made us one, and we are responsible for each other. So let's continue to let the world know that we defend life. We will continue to stand for the unborn. But more than ever, let the world see that in us, that since we're all in this together, we're also here to defend any woman who is struggling, thinking about getting an abortion, going through a crisis pregnancy. We're also here to bring back to the heart of our Lord Jesus any woman who might have had an abortion. Because what does God say about all of us? All of us. We're fearfully, wonderfully made. We're members of the Catholic Church. We've been called to do something wonderful in this world. If that means laying down our lives to defend those in poverty, then that's what we do. We stand up and help those who are suffering, that's what we do. If it means we put ourselves into uncomfortable positions to stand up for the right to life, and even if it means we personally get involved with someone who's been through an abortion, to walk with them, to literally hold their broken heart till Jesus can put it back together again, then that is what we do. The world doesn't believe we can do this. The world thinks we're just full of talk. But there are millions of women, millions of unborn babies who are dependent upon us that it is true. We will put into action what we are in reality. We are the body of Christ. And every single person matters because every single person is made in the image and likeness of God.